Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21 Moto3 career mode and it's round 6 right here in Le Mans for the French GP. So starting off in pole position, John McPhee, Jama Masia, Tatsuki Suzuki, Garcia, Rodrigo and Alcoba, Toba, Binder, Tatai, Fanati, Artigas, Mino, Grant, Acosta, Foggion, Chu, Sasaki, Fernandez, Guevara, Antonelli, Yamanaka, Kofla, Dupasque, Nepa, Sanach, Fallon, Rossi, Yuki Guni, and Baron Izdiha. So we now look to the lights here in Le Mans for the French GP, and away we go! Brilliant start, but don't forget we are on power setting one, and we are getting absolutely swarmed. Foggia, Onchu, Guevara around the outside. Terrible, terrible start. You would definitely say that one was abysmal, but can we save some space? Can we fight our way through the pack here into turn three? Decent amount of effort there. Got a couple of overtakes. Xavi Artigas got very close to cutting the outside corner there. We did bump into Pedro Acosta as well and Nicolo Antonio. Excuse me, that's Carlos Tatai up at the inside of the former Red Bull Rookies Cup winner. Up on the inside of Xavi Artigas. A little bit of contact there, but rubbing is racing, as you know. Romano Fanati, our teammate, is ahead of us. Of course, he won't be doing me any championship favours. He's not that kind of guy. Now we're getting up at the inside into the museum. Beautiful corner. Oh, beautiful move up on the inside of Fanati. Not sure why. Gabriel Rodrigo, excuse me, that's Jeremy Alcoba looking behind him. He should be concentrating on the race right now as we go around the outside of Darren Binder. Brilliant start from Sergio Garcia. He's up there into the main couple of packs. And up into the slipstream of Garcia and to the slipstream of Alcoba. You will really see the difference in power setting one here, guys. Look at that. We are in the slipstream and we cannot even keep up with them. This is going to be one heck of a challenge for these 11 laps here in Le Mans. Going around the outside for the Shimano Buffs. And a beautiful move over the inside of Jeremy Alcoba. We are really took off the gloves now. We're going really fisticuffs with the riders here. Because we know how much we have to do. Oh, and I've cut the track already. Goodness me. One track limit warning already with 11 laps to go. That is... Oh, it's not even close to being ideal. Now onto the rear of Kaita Toba, going into turn 13. Recordamont to be navigated once more. That is their first time we'll be into Recordamont, but it certainly won't be the last, as we'll try and get into the slipstream of Toba. We have a second lead to Jeremy Alcoba. It'll be very interesting to see how, where he is as we get close enough to turn 3. We're getting closer and closer to the rear of Toba if we had power setting 3 on, but quite frankly, we're going the opposite way. Going into turn 3... Not bad for execution. Up in the inside of Toba. And now Suzuki as well. Suzuki bumped into John McPhee as I bumped into him as well. Like a battering ram. We are really pushing really hard in this one. Now I know I can get past them in the corners and on the braking zones. But how do we do it on those bloody straights? John McPhee is just so quick. Look at the speed of the Honda compared to the Husqvarna and into Power Setting 1. We do make a little bit of a mistake into Museum. As we now go look quick. Look to the left hand side there just to make sure no one's going to pick me up in the corner. It's kind of Toba is on the left-hand side of us. We're trying into his slipstream. They tend to take a swinging line into turn six here, so we're going to go for the opposite. We're going to go for a wider line. Excuse me, turn eight for Garage Vert. Now into the slipstream of Toba. Careful not to accelerate where I did last time in the practice session. Of course, that ended in tears, so we don't be doing that there on the exit of Garage Vert. Now into the rear of Toba, and as you can see, we are losing a lot of time here. But we are strong on the brakes. We are very strong. This is the reason why I did a braking guide tutorial, because that's my best part of this game. I can break <laughs> the best of them. Call me the last of the late breakers. Channeling my inner Andrea De Vizioso as we go up in the inside of Kaito Toba. Don't touch my rear tyre, please. We've already seen what happens when that occurs. Now up in the inside of Kaito Toba, going into turn 13. Beautifully done. The right leg coming out of Grant. That familiar right foot and leg. Coming into Recordamont for the third time of asking, or second time of asking rather. Now onto the rear of Tatsuki Suzuki. And oh my goodness, we have lost so much time. We are losing time hand over fist here, losing chunks of it just by accelerating. This is awful. This guy Toba had to think about it. He had the speed, but he couldn't quite get past. So, not sure why. There is a bit of a glitch with this one as well. There, some of the riders behind. They won't swing past you, they'll just sort of bump you instead of going around you. Which is a little bit annoying, but still. I guess somebody shouldn't be using power setting one so early on in the Grand Prix. Well, this is the way it's going to be from now on, guys. I could probably lower the fuel consumption. Maybe that'll make it the bike a little bit lighter, but I decided not to even change that. Leave it as be. Let the bike be heavy as you want. 
and I will just try and work my way around it. We've got the soft front and the medium rear on currently as well. I do like the medium rear, but I went for the soft front because I thought, well, if the tyre degrades quicker, and because of course I'll be doing a lot more harder braking, this could get even more difficult. Now I'm not a masochist, but I assume that you guys would rather me do a challenge rather than just disappearing into the distance. So we're now going to Shimano Buffs for the third time of asking on the left hand side. Get ready to then flick it to the right. Careful not to cut the corner there because that is a whopping penalty. I think in the past games you would get at least a second by cutting over that one, but of course here we have the track limit warning system, which is much, much better. Now onto the left hand side for turn 12. We navigated the blue S's quite well there, so in turn, we got really close to Tatsuki Suzuki, and we're now closing in on the Japanese rider. Tatsuki-san will be accelerating off in a distance in a minute, though, but for the time being, get onto his rear tyre, get really close to him, as we do set our personal best of the race so far. There's a 144.260 for us. Not quite Jamma Massey's pace instead of 144.150, but it's not far away, considering we are still on power setting one. Now up on the inside is Suzuki-san, Beautifully done, but is he going to have the outside line? Not quite. Brilliant, brilliantly done. Brilliant defensive tactic there from Grant, but Tatsuki Suzuki straight back onto the 658 Squadra Rider. Now ahead of us, but we let him run it wide a little bit. Get up in the inside of La Chapelle. Use the speed. Use that corner speed of the Husqvarna. It's the only thing we've got right now. This and the braking. Right now, the speed is certainly not our friend. There's no utilization of the power setting two or three, so it's just time to make do with what we've got. Now you've got to look at these guys here without the, well, of course, with the absence of Darren Binder and Mino, these five are probably your top championship contenders this season. John McPhee right on the rear of Gabriel Rodrigo. Gabriel Rodrigo currently the runner-up in the championship standings as things stand. And Grant, of course, the world championship leader down in fourth place. One second behind this leading group as well. We're still giving it everything we've got. Power setting one will not deter us. We will chase them down. Now going to the Shimano buffs. We are very quick here, as we've mentioned earlier. Turn 10, navigated extremely well as well. Down by nine and a half seconds, tenths of a second right now. Onto the right hand side for the S blurs, the blue S's. For you and I, to under the left hand side for turn 12. We have taken two tenths of a second by going into the blue S's, that little bit sweeter. Now it's a further four tenths of a second remaining gone. We are down to five tenths of a second. Let's get into the slipstream of Darren Binder. And even better, we get off the inside of John McPhee. He's not even Binder. Binder's way further behind. You see a Petra and a Sprinter bike. And I assume it's Darren Binder. But John McPhee, ridiculous. He completely showed me up for what I said earlier about them bumping into the back of you. He did go around the outside and then he chucked it up in the in front of me. Oh my goodness, what a move this would be if we make it stick. Beautiful round the outside of John McPhee. Now for the inside of Gabriel Rodrigo. That is brilliant. That is perfection. Who knew I'd be on power setting one and be doing that? Ah, you didn't know that, did you? I didn't know it either. Now onto the rear of Jammer Masia. Masia's not really been as strong as we thought he would be in MotoGP 21 career mode right now. The last time we seen him, it was being taken out into Hareth. And I'm talking about the real MotoGP right now. He's been battered in Hareth by Dennis on Chew. But for the video game, he's not doing too bad, but he could be a lot better. I think he has a victory to his name this season. I'm not sure it's Gabriel Rodrigo. Goodness me, that was a wallop and a half on that one. That was a real jab into the right-hand side. My arms will be covered in Dunlop front tyre from a certain Gabriel Rodrigo on the Comelin Grassini bike. Now into the rear of John McPhee. Look at the speed. How do we contend with that just on the corners? Oh, John McPhee was getting closer and closer there as well. I did see a little bit of his helmet as we now go onto the right-hand side for Shimano Buffs. Brilliantly executed from Gabriel Rodrigo. He allowed me to take that corner too wide and then fought back immediately. Now onto the right hand side for the blue S's. Get ready for the change of direction. Oh, I couldn't turn in there because Gabriel Rodrigo had me stumped, but we will have the inside line going into turn 12. We know we're gonna be strong here. A little bit of contact made there, but it's quite all right. Turn 13 navigated well, turn 14 coming up. That is excellent exit. I'm trying to line this up now for when things get really serious towards the end of the laps. Brilliant consistent pace there from us, by the way, though. The second lap, a 144.6, 144.2, 144, and then a 144.4. Brilliant consistency from us. That is what we're going to have to do. But I did feel really good into the practice sessions, even with uh, power setting one. But never mind about that. We're going to the inside. Turn four. Brilliant. Grant leads for the very first time in this Grand Prix. Le Mans is ours for now. Oh, Jam and Massia. We can't even get the cutback because he's pushed us wide. 
We'll try and go around the outside. Oh, picked up into La Chapelle. Brilliant stuff from the Spaniard. Really, really good stuff. Now onto the left-hand side for Museum. On to the rear of Jamon Massier. Gabriel Rodriguez, two tenths of a second behind, a tenth and a half. He won't lose the toe, certainly, because, of course, we aren't that quick anyway. But he has lost a little bit of ground. I don't know if he's had a bit of a battle with John McPhee, which has brought him further down. But, of course, these guys can't afford to be fighting when we're getting away at the front. Of course, Jamon Massey only needs to open the throttle, and there you go. He's already disappearing into the distance. The gap was around two tenths of a second out of the corner, and it's now up to four tenths of a second. So they're getting two to three tenths of a second coming out of each corner. That is concerning, but we are right on the rear tail of the Spaniard now. That is brilliant. Breaking into the blue SS for turn 12, turn 11, sorry. And then getting closer and closer to Jamamasio. We're up in the inside, around the outside. Jamamasio back up in the inside. Brilliant stuff. Red Bull KTM team have got a beauty in Jamamasio. Oh, we die over the inside for turn 13. Brilliant. Up into the lead and back into the defending position. Oh, careful on the rumble strip there, but we are up. By two tenths of a second. We're down up by a tenth and a bit. Up by a tenth. Not even that anymore. Jamon Massey should be coming up on the screen any moment now. There he is. Brilliant stuff. How do we contend with that one? John McPhee is coming back into action as well. Jamon Massey takes the wider line, but we take that tighter one. Wait for him to change the direction, and then we'll have it. Oh, we couldn't quite do it because Jamon Massey was already positioned in that position that we wanted. Brilliant stuff. Turn five. Onto the right hand side. Now for turn six with a La Chapelle. Getting closer and closer to Jamma Master John McVee's there. There's that light blue, duck egg blue of the uh, Patronus Sprinter racing bike. The Honda is getting closer and closer. Currently, it's KTM versus Husqvarna versus Honda. McVee is coming. McVee up at the inside. Picks Grant up in the corner. This is getting tense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is getting really tense. I don't think I can win this one with the amount of speed difference that we are losing on the straights. I don't think we can actually do this. It's McPhee! Brilliant move up into the inside of Garage Vert. We need to get into the slipstream of the Scotsman right now, otherwise we are going to lose so much time. Oh, what a race so far, guys. Struggling for breath, as always, to commentate this one. Now onto the left-hand side for the Shimano buffs. Get ready for the change of direction, because you know I'm going to go for it. Oh, contact made. Patronus Honda Man certainly won't appreciate that one. Tell it, similar to the feeling that Jeremy Alcoba got when John McPhee kicked him in Qatar. Into the left-hand side for turn 12. I'm going to line up for turn 13 again. We could potentially go around the outside. Let's try it. Why not let it fly? Oh, leaned on him there. Lent onto his right-hand side there, onto his left leg of that dying easy boot. But we got a brilliant exit there. I tell you what, if that's how it's going to have to be done for the final corner, then that's what we're going to have to do. Go around the outside and then flick it up on the inside. But Jamon Massey into the lead. We're not even going to discuss the final lap yet because we've just lost not one, not two, but three bloody positions on one straight. Not good enough as we try and get back up against the Argentine. Oh, he clutched our nose up. We fight back again anyway. Yes. Brilliant stuff. Oh, the fists are clenched. <laughs> it's going to come straight down to the wire, this one. One of four riders could win this one. Take your pick, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the comment section down below now before the race transpires. Who do you think is going to win this one? Who's going to come out on top in this absolute battle for attrition? Right here is, oh my goodness, all oh, around the inside, outside, wherever it's going to be. I thought Gabriel Rodrigo was going to try and pick me up in the corner. Smooth riding from the Argentine. Oh, he picks me up anyway, going into the straight. Can we go around the outside? Beautifully done. Do we have the temerity to go around the outside of John McPhee as well? We don't, but I'll tell you what. Rodrigo has the temerity to go over the inside of me, though. Oh, my God. Brilliant. Oh, this one's getting really hot now. We're losing ground. We're losing touch. Stop fighting with me, Rodrigo. We need to chase him down. We can't be infighting now. We have to work together. Now into the Shimano buffs. Onto the rear of John McPhee. Onto the rear of Jamamasia. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to come out on top into Gary... Uh, to, I can't even speak for the Blue Asses. Oh, could we go for the inside line? Around the outside into... Oh, not quite. That would have been a move of the century, that one. That would have been for the archive as we go get between John McPhee. Oh, careful to touch the outside of John McPhee. Oh, John, Joe Messia. Oh, I can't speak. Oh, into the rear. Oh, my God. This is getting ridiculous. I've tried to go around the outside of John McPhee, but John McPhee was there as well. And there was too many J's to pronounce in one sentence. And things got hectic. It went really hectic to a handbasket. But then lap times, I tell you what. 
They've declined ever so much, but they are still pretty consistent. As we go over the inside of John McPhee, that is a beautiful manoeuvre if I ever did see one. Put that in the archive, but John McPhee wants to put his own archive in it. No, this is my archive, this is my channel. <laughs> Now going in the inside goes John McPhee. Let him run it wide and we'll have the inside line. That's how it's done. You have to give up something to give it back. Oh, contact me. There were Gemma Masia. Taste my husk, Varna. Now round the outside of John McPhee. Beautiful. Beautifully done by John McPhee. That is a classic block pass going into Musée. Brilliant stuff from John McPhee. He's into the lead right now as we pick up the KTM ride of Gemma Masia. John McPhee has the cream rise to the top. Is John McPhee the main contender of this Grand Prix? We got a little bit wide of the garage vert. Ooh, we just touched the green again. There you go. Second track limit warning for Grant. We'll have to be careful now. We do not want those dread in three letters. L L P. Not quite. We don't need that right now. We have to do it three more times if we're going to sustain a long lap penalty. So fingers crossed we don't do that. But we get close enough now to John McPhee. Brilliant. Battle of England versus Scotland is on. Getting into turn 11 for the Blue S's. Getting closer and closer to John McPhee. We could have the change of direction up on the inside. Ooh. Oh, I definitely thought about it. I am probing for an overtake. Because, of course, this next lap is the penultimate lap. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that has absolutely bloody flown. As we're getting onto the rear outer record amount for the second to final time. Third to final time. Asking, we'll be doing it two more times yet. Now onto the rear of John McPhee. Using power setting one, we're right in the slipstream. I think he's had to drop down to another power level as well because he's not getting away from us as we planned. As we get up at the inside, can we? Not quite. John McPhee defended well. Things have calmed down a little bit. Forget about calm. We're up in the inside already to turn four. Brilliant underneath the Dunlop Bridge. John McPhee can't get past, surely. Have we got it? Oh, we run it wide into La Chapelle. We're trying to get that long line. We worked anyway. John McPhee went for the inside when we had the inside line now. Brilliant. Getting closer and closer into Muse. Less corners are remaining. Oh my goodness, John McPhee again. He is brilliant into Muse. Absolutely brilliant. But Gabriel Rodrigo, actually, he might be out of this. What on earth has happened to Jama Masia? He's dropped behind into the clutches of Tatsuki Suzuki. Not sure what's happened to him, but right now, it's these two men. Garage Vert is currently hosting two brilliant British riders. John McPhee into the lead on the Patronus Sprinter bike. Grant on board the Sterile Guard of Max Racing Husqvarna. This is a battle between Honda and KTM, or at least Honda Husqvarna, which is a KTM with a Husqvarna chassis. As we go into the Shimano buffs, a little bit wide there. We lost a little bit of ground to John McPhee. If this is a replication, what's going to be? We really... Oh, not right now, Rodrigo. Please, not now, son. We don't need you getting involved now. If you want to just hang on and just pick up the spoils, that's fine by me, but you're putting pressure on me, son. Stop it, please. <laughs> Stop forcing me into mistakes. Can we go to the inside of turn 13? Oh, track limit warning. Oh, my goodness. We have to stop doing the track limit warning. It's another track limit warning. No. We do. Oh, I can't mess it up now by getting another track limit warning. Ladies and gentlemen, the final lap is upon us. The soft tyre on the front is dead. The medium tyre's got a little bit of life, but it is Rodrigo. Please, not now, mate. Not now. The Argentine tries to fight, but it's not quite good enough. Brilliantly done into turn three, though, from Grant. Defensive lines. Oh, we're on to the rear of John McPhee. We need to stay with him. He cannot gain a lead going into the final couple of corners. If he is ahead by Shimano buffs, this could well and truly be over, ladies and gentlemen. We have to give it everything we've got now. My heart is pounding. We really want to win this one. The first race with power setting one utilised only. Please do not forget that we have only used power setting one in this one. And that's why it's been so difficult to fight John McPhee, Rodrigo, Binder, Suzuki, Messiah, Miss Masia. And we now go into Garage Vert. We want to be the Messiah and we want to beat John McPhee. Not the exit we wanted. Can we get into the slipstream? John McPhee, this is his. This is his, ladies and gentlemen. We have been beaten. Power setting one has not quite been good enough for us. We'll try and chase him down into Shimano Buff. Rodrigo's going to be up on the inside if we're not careful. Going very late into Shimano Buff. Look at the gap we've got in. Oh my god. That is brilliant. We're right on the rear tail of John McPhee now. John McPhee defending well into the blue asses. He's gone a little bit wide. We could get up at the inside. Oh, he's cut my nose off. Not quite. Turn to He's going to have to be recording on. Turn 13. One of the two. Can we get up at the inside? Oh, stunning. Is it? No, not quite. Stunning. Yes. 
Oh, a beautiful move! Oh, we've done it! Block pass! Get in there, son! Stunning Grant wins in a stunning way! Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant finish, guys! Wow! Ladies and gentlemen, what a victory for Grant! Looked like he was dead in the water with five tenths of a second behind coming out of Garage Verb, but ultimately Grant wins, McPhee second, and Rodrigo takes third. Wow, unbelievable. So Grant wins here in Le Mans, extends his championship lead now to 23 points over Gabriel Rodrigo, and a further 10 points ahead of championship rival John McPhee, who has just been beaten into Recordamont. Absolutely phenomenal finish, guys. Absolutely brilliant. A stunning victory for stunning Matt Grant. We need to see the team championship now. So we are up by, excuse me, Patrona Sprinter Racing are up by 29 points over the Sterile Guard and Max Racing team. I'm pretty much the only one flying the flag for Husqvarna. So we're doing a damn decent job if I do say so myself. That podium celebration is underwhelming. That, it, it, we should be absolutely elated by that one. Power setting one. The difficulty scale has just been increased. Absolutely phenomenal race, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dolt Race upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.